Good morning, Gopher Nation. Welcome back. We are so excited to have you here on campus with us today. Welcome uh, to some others for the first time. We're, we're excited to have you. I'm, I'm very excited over the next uh, couple of days to get out and about to see your faces under masks, of course. Uh, but I just want to welcome you. Uh, I know your teachers are excited to have you. I hope you're, you're happy to be back. And we really want to kick off this uh, school year on a really positive note um, here coming back after such a long time. It's been almost 550-ish days uh, since our campus has been full to full capacity of students. And it's something that I've been looking forward to, and I hope you've been looking forward to it as well. I want to come to you this morning, as I do every school year, to talk about sort of some of my expectations, some of your teachers' expectations for you, uh, just so that there's no stone left unturned for uh, someone to say, well, I didn't know I couldn't do that, or I didn't know I couldn't do this. Um, so um, some of this uh, presentation this morning will be information informational for you, uh, and some of it will be um, you know, a little bit more on the on the heavy side uh, of some information that you'll get uh, from me specifically. Um, you know, and some of it is overwhelmingly, uh, I guess, you know, just rules and things like that. But you know, what would a what would a principal be if I didn't tell you all some of the rules as we go through our day? Um, so there's a lot that's going to come at you over the next couple of days and really over the next couple of weeks. Uh, but we're going to have lots of homeroom lessons uh, to get you prepared. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, so the first thing I want to do is I want to make sure I direct your attention to uh, some of you may have new uh, administrators or counselors. Um, so we have our ninth grade administrators, Ms. Housen and Ms. Woodruff in the business office with Mr. Caldwell and Mr. Newberry. Uh, and then Ms. Jones's caseload has remained the same with the same counselors. Uh, Mr. Smith will now be working with 10th grade through 12th grade, last names H through O, working with Ms. Jenkins. And Ms. Hansen will be working with 10th through 12th grade uh, with uh, last names P through Z with Ms. Mills. And then, of course, if you have AVID, you work with Mr. Caldwell and your Alpha Admin. And if you're a BEMA student, you work with uh, Ms. Williams and Mr. Love as your administrator. If you have schedule issues today, all of you have already gone to uh, 1A, uh, but you have, if you have schedule issues today, um, you will report to the auditorium. Now, let me be clear. A schedule issue is... Uh, is not, um, oh, well, I didn't want to take team sports basketball. I wanted to take uh, nutrition. That's not a schedule issue. Uh, you can submit a course change request on the PowerSchool portal, uh, but that period only lasts for the first 10 days of school. And there are very specific requirements that I've emailed out to all students and families uh, the other day um, so that you're aware of how you can go about changing a class or, or or what are the uh, steps that you need to take. The only reason you should need uh, uh, to see someone today or tomorrow is if you either have a hole in your schedule or you're double booked. A hole in the schedule means you're missing a, a class. So for instance, let's say you have a 1A and a 3A, but you're missing a 2A. During 2A, not during 1A or now during homeroom, uh, during 2A, you will report to the auditorium to get your schedule filled. If you're double booked, meaning let's pretend you have two two A's or two two three A, uh, three A's. Don't do it at a different time. Do it during three A. Report to the auditorium. Any of those issues should be resolved in the auditorium. And again, that drop ad is done electronically. You can contact your counselor for how to do that, but there are very strict limitations on uh, why you would need to change your schedule. So our bell schedule for this week and next week will be like this. You'll have first period from 7.30 to 8.41. Every period is about uh, 71 minutes with the exception of uh, third period. Uh, after first period, you will go to your specific homeroom. That homeroom is listed um, on the back of your schedule lanyard that you should have received in first period this morning. Then you'll go to second period. Then you'll go to a second homeroom, and I'll talk a little bit about why um, in a minute. And then you'll have third period. And for those of you that have been with us before, um, your third period teacher or actually your homeroom teacher today will go over with you the lunch period so that you know when exactly you go to lunch. Uh, it will either be you know A, B, C, or D, depending on what class you have um, third period. And then fourth period to close us out here uh, for the day. A couple of points for the school day. You notice when you came in this morning, there were food kiosks. Uh, or food carts available for breakfast. Breakfast is available for everybody. Actually, all meals are available for everybody for free this year. So when you come in in the morning, you come through the courtyard, you can grab breakfast. It's available for you. Um, and also, um, 
lunch is free for all students this year as well. Uh, so if you if you need lunch or you want lunch, it's free. You don't have to enter your number. Everybody gets the same lunch uh, during the school day. There's fresh fruit and vegetables always available uh, to you. Um, we always want to make sure that we attend our assigned lunch. So if my class has B lunch, I only go to B lunch. Um, the other point I want to go back to about arrival is when you come onto campus, as soon as you enter a building, you must go directly to your first period class. We're not going to walk the halls or hang out in the media lobby. Uh, there's a lot of concerns with contact tracing and COVID, which I'll get to in a minute. Uh, but we want to make sure you go directly to first period once you enter a building. If you want to walk and talk in the courtyard for a bit, you may. Uh, gates open at 715. But you want to make sure you get right to your first period right away, especially if you need to eat breakfast. You need to eat breakfast in your first period, not walking around, not in the courtyard and things like that. Um, and then lastly, dismissal. Uh, we will be starting the year uh, dismissing by building. Uh, part of that is to make sure we get every uh, student on the right bus uh, for the next couple of days. And then also is just for the safety and security of how we're going to operate uh, for a little bit. We're going to dismiss by building. So please wait for the PA for fourth period, not a bell. Uh, gopher block. Some of you may be wondering, well, hey, I saw that bell schedule, but where is gopher block? Um, my targeted start date for gopher block is September. It's cut off there. It is September 20th. So that's only two weeks away. Um, gopher block will focus on your ability to access classrooms, clubs, lunch. There'll be study halls. You can go to the gym and the cafeteria is not required. Um, the biggest thing I'm going to say to you all is you will find that over the next couple of weeks, we're going to have some very important lessons about how gopher block works. And it is important that you pay attention because next Friday, uh, September 17th, you are all going to have to take the gopher block quiz. And as a school, we're going to have to get 85 percent. Uh, 85 percent of you are going to have to, uh, you know, show that you understand gopher block. Also, gopher block is dependent on, you know, how we interact with each other socially uh, during the school day. If I'm seeing or our administration uh, administration is seeing that, you know, maybe we're not ready to handle a, a more sort of um, open period. Um, then maybe we need to stick with the four lunches. So it's dependent upon you and how we interact with one another, with staff and things like that. Now, when we have gopher block, you'll see we'll have first period, we'll have homeroom every day. Part of that homeroom, there will be lessons. Um, and also part of that homeroom will be uh, getting you set up for success for gopher block. Then we'll have second period, then we'll have red block and white block. Again, I'm not going to get into the details on that. Um, but the biggest thing is that you'll be able to access teachers. You won't have to eat in the cafeteria or other places um, and, and so on. If I can go back for one second, I did want to mention for lunches. Um, so in order to, to be a little more distance during the day, uh, you will be assigned a lunch based on what class you have third period. That uh, lunch schedule will be shared by your teachers when I'm done uh, with my presentation this morning. Uh, we, we have plenty of seats for everyone in the cafeteria. When you go into the cafeteria, you must remain masked uh, and you must stay masked until you're eating. Once you're eating, obviously, you can take your mask down. Um, the other thing is there are 150 uh, media passes available uh, to, to promote distancing. So um, as you are coming to the cafeteria, if you'd like to go to the media center instead of the cafeteria to distance yourself, uh, from others and to also lighten our load a bit in the cafeteria. As soon as you come every lunch, uh, the administrator who's working the door will have a color coded uh, media pass available for you. So please make sure um, you come get a pass. If you need lunch, get your pass first, then go get lunch um, so that you can then go to the media center. But we have plenty of seats available. And then there are also there's also limited seating uh, available outside of the courtyard. Now, that being said, you are welcome to eat lunch in the cafeteria, but if we have about uh, you know 40 or 50 people eating in the courtyard out at the table zone uh, area uh, between business and the cafeteria, and then 150 people um, eating in the, uh, you can eat in the media center, eating in the media center, that should only leave us about 200 or 250 people or so in the cafeteria, which is a very small number for our cafeteria that sometimes holds uh, around 600 uh, for lunch. So I did wanted to go back and give you that point. Um, again, back to the gopher block schedule, you will have gopher block lessons starting next week to teach you about how gopher block is going to work. I'm really excited about it. But again, it's all dependent upon you. Are we showing that we understand the rules and uh, responsibilities to maintain a safe and orderly environment here at Glen Burnie, even during an hour long lunch? And then are we also able to show your proficiency with the, the quiz that we take? 
I always like every year to talk about some targeted behaviors that we're going to make sure students aren't engaging in. And those three are our are, are targeted behaviors here at Glen Burnie High School, which is vaping, tardiness, and class cuts. Um, these are things that, that we are, uh, you know, keeping uh, an ear to the ground about. Um, remember, uh, you need to be to class on time. We will start the tardy table next week. Um, I'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, remember, when you're using the bathroom, you should use the bathroom associated with your building using the color-coded uh, pass uh, that your teacher will provide for you by building. So uh, students that choose to vape, we shouldn't be vaping, right, especially in this time where we're wearing masks. We shouldn't be going to the bathroom around the courtyard to vape. It's dirty. It's disgusting. I don't know why we do it. Um, but if you are caught with a vape or vape products or you're caught vaping in a bathroom, um, you will be assigned Saturday school, which is an alternative to suspension, and you'll be rolled in the anti-tobacco use program. Uh, should you continue to do that after that first offense, um, you'll be uh, looking at uh, more suspension from school. So, you know, in an attempt to, to you know, kind of deter this, uh, you know, there are some stiff consequences that go with that, and that's on purpose. Um, and at the same time, you know, Saturday school, that's an alternative to suspension. Um, so if you fail to attend Saturday school, then you will be suspended from school. As you all know, we've uh, made being on time here a major uh, important thing since we've been in the building here at Glen Burnie. So this is the tardy policy that I'll ask the teachers to um, you know, review with you frequently. Um, first period is kept separate from second and fourth period. You need to be on time to class. This is the progression of discipline uh, that will result if you cannot be on time to class, right? You'll get a couple of warnings, then you'll start to get some detention, maybe detention on Friday afternoon, maybe in-school intervention, and then again Saturday, which is an alternative to suspension. Um, but uh, being on time and being in class is your number one priority every day while on campus. Uh, students at cl uh, class cut, uh, first offense is right to Friday school, uh, and then we'll be doing some in-school intervention followed by Saturday school and so on. We need to be in school, in class, your attendance is, is of the utmost importance. And then you all know uh, there are certain non-negotiable behaviors that we cannot have to run a safe and orderly operation here at Glen Burnie High School. Some things that I've never tolerated and we cannot tolerate and are non-negotiable to me. All of the things that you see on this screen uh, will result in immediate removal from school via suspension. Um, you know, some of the biggest ones is swearing at or in response to adults. Um, you know, we, we can't run a safe and orderly school where, where we uh, speak to uh, adults or, or people who are in a position uh, with the school with, with foul language. And then, as you all know, we don't fight at Glen Burnie High School. We won't fight at Glen Burnie High School. We're going to find other ways to resolve our conflict. You need to see an adult. You need to see a counselor. You need to see an administrator. Um, students that choose to fight at Glen Burnie High School will not go to Glen Burnie High School. It is that simple. It is that serious. Um, and then, uh, you know, of course, alcohol and drugs, possession, consumption, distribution. Um, this is a large high school with over 2,000 students, and, and your safety is my number one priority. And it's my belief uh, that if we can stay away from these behaviors, we will uh, keep you and each other uh, safe. I want to talk briefly about uh, COVID protocols, distance. Um, as you know, this is not hybrid. We're not doing hybrid learning. Uh, you should distance as much as you possibly can. Um, you know, uh, you will not have to quarantine if you're determined to close contact in a classroom and you were within six feet as long as you were masked. Your biggest defense against having to stay home for 10 days because you were quarantined is twofold. One, being in a mask and two, being vaccinated. If you are vaccinated and you are close to someone in a classroom and that someone comes down with COVID, if you're vaccinated and not showing any symptoms, you will not need to quarantine. If you were wearing a mask and you're not showing any symptoms, you will not need to quarantine. That being said, if you do have to quarantine, your teachers will upload all of your assignments onto Brightspace and you will be assigned a mentor who you will have to check in with um, if you're well enough to do so. Of course, and you haven't come down with COVID. Hopefully you won't. Um, uh, in that time during quarantine, you'll have someone to check in with who will help you um, get through all of your, uh, you know, work and things like that that your teachers have posted um, onto Brightspace. But like I said, your best defense against uh, having to be out of school for 10 days and missing your friends and missing uh, schoolwork is to be masked and to be vaccinated. When you are inside the building, you're inside a classroom. If you're not eating at lunch or during breakfast, you are to be masked. Um, this is a Maryland state uh, protocol. Um, it's not just a county protocol. Um, and then, uh, you know, 
of course, being vaccinated helps to fight against the spread of COVID-19 and uh, helps you to, to stay in school and not be quarantined. So, um, you know, when you walk outside, I know we, we have the benefit here at Glen Burnie that we don't have at other schools. When you walk outside, if you need to take your mask off, take a mask break, you're free to do it outside. But once you enter that building, uh, again, you must be masked. And then, of course, I want to end us with some some good news, some some positive things coming up uh, next Thursday. No school for Yom Kippur. Uh, hopefully on Monday, September 20th, we're going to kick off Gopher Block. And we've got uh, another home football game on Friday, September 24th. And we got homecoming week at the end of September, beginning of October. And then, you know, let's be mindful of our end of first marking period. It's not going to be that far away um, on November 12th. So that's all the specifics I have from our presentation. You're going to learn a lot over the next two weeks um, about gopher block, about uh, expected behaviors and code of conduct lessons, about building community. Um, you know, I want us and I've talked to teachers. I want us to take it slow. Uh, we haven't been back in school for some time. I'm so happy to be back, even if I got to wear a mask all day. And I'll be honest with you, I don't love doing it. I don't think anybody does, but I'd rather be in school in a mask than sitting at home on my computer in virtual learning. So I say that to you all to to remind you um, of what a what a great place this is, this is and where you need to be every day. So we don't want to see you quarantined. We don't want to see you out of school because you chose to engage in a negative behavior or anything like that. I want you to be here in school with us every single day. We've got some exciting things coming this year. Um, we had an amazing uh, weekend uh, last weekend. We had a football win. We had uh, girls soccer beat Dundalk eight to nothing. Just some uh, boys soccer won some big games, volleyball. Um, you know, cheerleaders look awesome. The band was doing great. Um, we got a lot of really good things coming or coming back that I'm excited about. So let's let's put all of our efforts into being positive uh, upon this return to school. And I can't wait to see so many of you out and about over the next couple of weeks. Again, welcome and welcome back.